Welcome to Adapt of Chicago Productions. I'm Lynn Padato. Today we have with us Rob Rotman, actor, advocate, and Adapt of Chicago member. Welcome, Rob. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so we're here to, you have a lot of things we want to talk about, right. but first, you are a prolific letter writer. So um, why did you start writing letters and tell us a little bit about I your, think, your experience? Thank you, Lynn. Um, when I was in eighth grade in my hometown in Maquoketa, Iowa, um, uh, I was in eighth grade biology class. And um, there was a gentleman named, I believe, J.F. Brookings. And he came and he was talking to his students and he said he was from South Dakota. I said, well, you know, I really admire your Senator McGovern. He said, well, you know, Rob, I know Senator McGovern, and I'll give him your message. Two weeks later, I got in the mail a letter from George McGovern, who many people may know was a senator from South Dakota, who um, I think Bobby Kennedy would have picked as his vice president if Bobby Kennedy had lived. Um, very fine man. And I got like a nice letter, and then I got um, some pamphlets about U.S. government. And oh, wow. My mom wrote him back a letter and said, thank you for writing our son. And we're both strong Democrats. And she mentioned the two Democrats in Iowa at the time. So it was just so neat. And that kind of, you know, that I, that I could get a letter from a man of that stature. That is fascinating. So mm -hmm. you received the letter from McGovern. Did right. that ignite future letter writing? Letter writing, yeah, yeah. So like who have you written letters to and received uh, responses Respect. from? Um, the great playwright Tony Kushner who wrote, mm -hmm. I guess it could be argued the most important play written in America, the last 30 years, um, Angels in America. And uh, of course I, I think a play that does deal with disability and uh, them at the world when he was here, when the play Angels in America was here in the 1990s on its first national tour, and you know it's such a small world. I wrote him in in his, the published version of the play. He talks about how um, he mentions a man named Mark Brandenburg. So when I wrote him the letter, I said, you know, Mr. Kushner, I when I was at Iowa as an undergrad, I knew a Mark Brandenburg from Bettendorf, Iowa, and in his letter that he wrote me, he said, yeah, you. The, the Mark Brandenburg you mentioned is probably my Mark Brandenburg. He's from Bettendorf, oh. who of course turned out to be Tony Kushner's first partner. So. Wow, so it's such yeah. a small world. Such a small world. So yeah. what was Angels in America about for those who it's aren't about, familiar? Okay, it's about really America in the 80s, okay. how AIDS affected America. Um, you have a straight couple, the husband turns out to be gay. You have a character named Pryor Walters who has AIDS, and then I guess you have um, the character um, Roy Cohn, who many people may know was um, M Joseph McCarthy's big aide on the McCarthy era. He um, is also the man who helped organ um, prosecute Julius and Ethel Rosenberg and oh, sent wow. them to their death. And in the play, Mr. Kushner it, um, um, sets up an imaginary meeting between Ethel Rosenberg as a ghost and um, um, Roy Cohn, and it's hilarious. And it's a six hour play, there are two parts. And of course, people may know the movie version with okay. Al Pacino as Roy Cohn and Meryl Streep as Ethel Rosenberg. And they're all playing other roles. And one of the last great movies that Mike Nichols wow. made. So, Angels in America. So, maybe something during this. Uh, when you're on vacation or you have right. a few, few days or whatever, you go to your library it. and, and rent, it. rent yeah, it. I'm sure it's available on it's Netflix. Worth, it's yeah. worth getting. Well, um, you also have, a, your sister has a scrapbook on right. Robert Kennedy. Well, thank you. My sister Sue, um, and I have the picture here, um, when she was about 16 years old, um, I think like so many Americans, we were devastated by the death of Robert Kennedy in 1968. I mean, to have Ke John Kennedy and then Martin Luther King and um, Robert Kennedy. So she made a scrapbook in memory of Bobby Kennedy, um, had d interesting pictures of it, in it about his life. Um, I wrote a picture, tribute to Bobby. Uh, a friend of mine, Jim Elkins, wrote a tribute to Bobby. So um, what happened was in the summer of 1969, Senator, or, I'm sorry, Representative John Culver, who was um, our congressman, a small world, he was Ted Kennedy's classmate at Harvard, brought two men, um, Congressman Ed Koch and Ben Rosenthal from New York City. I thought, you know, he said, you know, I'm from Iowa. Let me bring in two um, congressmen from New York to see what life on a farm is like. So mm -hmm. they spent a weekend, and my sister and I went out to the fam farm of 
or I guess it wasn't a farm, I should say, um, the home of Bob and Frances Melville. And we presented it to them, and we had this picture in the paper. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so my sister, of course, Sue, me, and uh, a little boy named R.B. Melvold, who was the youngest son of the newspaper publisher, Bob Melvold. And which one is your sister? Uh, Sue is here. Okay, Sue's there, yeah. okay, and she was 16. And right. how did they receive this scrapbook? Like, what did, what did they say about it? They were very impressed. I know, I can remember Ed Koch, who many remember, was a, once the mayor of New York, a very colorful character, and uh, him saying, I know Mrs. Kennedy will be very touched by it. Wow. And in fact, John Culver took um, the scrapbook and he gave it to Ethel Kennedy. And I remember she wrote us back and said, thanks so much. And she said, Ethel signed it, then her son Max signed it. Wow, so you actually received a yeah, letter from Ethel know, Kennedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know, I think again, it shows, Lynn, you know, that politicians did once care about mm -hmm. people. And yeah. Do you think they don't care? I think they anymore? care, but you know, I, I, I think they're, they're so possessed with the bigger world, mm. they really forget the intimate, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess it's a different world maybe than yeah, back yeah. then, but it shouldn't be. Right, you I mean, know, I mean, I know we have Facebook, I know we have social media, but as long as there's something called letters, I'm still mm -hmm. gonna write letters, I mean, you know. Have you written any letters recently that you? Um, recently, well, actually a few years ago, when Tennessee Williams turned 100, I wrote a group of politicians about, you know, um, this is Tennessee Williams' centennial year, and I would like to think Congress would make some kind of a declaration honoring his life. I wrote Senator Mary Landrieu, who from Louisiana, since obviously streetcar named Desire, uh, Senator Clara McCaskill from Missouri, Glass Menagerie. I wrote Tom Harkin from Iowa, because obviously Tennessee Williams went to Iowa. And then I wrote um, Dick Durbin, our senator, because Tennessee Williams, the Glass Menagerie, got its start in the city. And I wrote Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, mm -hmm. who is a real friend of ours and certainly supports our issues. And she's the only one I get a response back really? from. Really? So, yeah. Uh -huh, that's interesting. Yeah. And that they never, no. they never recognized. No, yeah. Well, um, so what was it like growing up with a disability in Iowa? And, and would you like to share with people what your disability is? I think my disability um, is dystonia. Okay. Um, my sister Sue had a more marked version of it, um, and she couldn't really lift her head, but so she had to hold it with her arms. And um, you know, it, she had kind of slurred speech. My problem, I think, is not only do I have a hand co eye coordination problem, but I have a learning disability. Mm. And so, you know, I, I kind of fill in that, you know, the politically, I think students who got education in the 70s have had it better because of the um, IEP, the Rehab Act, which mandated that every student dis with a disability needs a real education. So I think I just kind of felt that I sw was swept through the school system. Um. And um, my, my handwriting especially, has been a big problem for me. And I think one of the reasons why it's been so hard for me to get a real job in my life is, you know, look, it's just been very hard for me to write. It's interesting because 40 years ago this fall, I was in an undergrad at Iowa, University of Iowa, and I had a professor, and I'm gonna name her name, Miriam Gilbert, and she had a problem with my handwriting. Um, she said to me, I don't see how you can be in college with such handwriting. I am pleased to say that 40 years later, we are very good friends. So oh, wow. Isn't that neat, you know, when a person can really change their attitude. But, you know, again, I, I think, you know, the 70s were a bad time to be in college. And, you know, just anyone could go, and there were no, no real sense of, you know, people need real education. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so I guess I got to the performing arts because I figured my handwriting wouldn't necessarily be a problem. And so what kind of performing arts did you do in college? Um, college, I was only in one play as an undergrad, um, the famous playwright who is still writing today, Lee Blessing. And, but when I was back in grad school, um, I had my own theater company, which maybe we can talk about. And I, my con emphasis was on theater for special populations. Um, a gentleman named Lee Wen Goff, who I've talked to, said, sure, Rob, I think it'd be interesting for you to form a theater company made up of people with disabilities and explore what it's like for a disabled person to be on stage. Um, you know, I, I got my undergrad, I didn't do anything with it, and then I ended up working on a production called Through Our Eyes, which is made up of 40 people with disabilities from the Iowa City community who had never been on stage before. And I was kind of the assistant stage manager, and a guy named Kevin Reeves directed, and he was working on a grad degree at Lynn. You know, when you see people, 
putting all their energy on stage. That's what's so important. And that got me back into theater. And Have you done anything like that in Chicago? Oh, well, I mean, I've done some theater workshops mm -hmm. that I'm really proud of. And I, I, I hope to really start doing that again because mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, I go to so many meetings that act just living, you know, and that people, I think, want creativity in their lives. I mean, I realize they have low funds, but, you know, they go home and watch silly TV. Yeah. Well, and I think it's something right. that you could that you could do without right. maybe having a lot of funds available. Right. I mean, you, all you need yeah. is space. I and mean, with the main line, people to participate. We just we just did it. You yeah. Know, we got up and did it, and and one one of my most proudest moments was we did a show, and um, a professor Cosmo Catalano came up to us and said, "I have never seen people enjoy being on stage that much in my entire life." And Another young girl, one woman, undergrad, Tony Volstead said, you know, I never knew if I wanted to be around, I will use a word we don't like, but handicapped people, mm -hmm. but working with you has changed my experience. Yeah, it's, it's great for everyone involved. Right, yeah. And um, I think it's easy, it should be easy to do. So yeah. That would be yeah. wonderful yeah, if and you I could. I continue doing it, yeah. Because I just feel I have all this material in my apartment and that's waiting to use sections from plays. Um, it's me yeah, about the mainliners. Um, there's a woman in my company, Leslie O'Leary, who I met at the American College Theater, Fe no, sorry about that, the American College Testing Program in Iowa City, and we were both there, and we were on, they were honored for hiring the handicapped. So Leslie was a gimp, I was a gimp. Of course, the minute they didn't need us anymore, they let us go. Oh. They, they, here they get honored by the state of Iowa. So um, a few years later, Leslie told me she was taking an acting class. What happened was that Iowa, the summer before I got into grad school, did a Tennessee Williams summer. Um, and they did um, Night of the Iguana, Closed from a Summer Hotel, which was about F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway, which premiered at the Goodman here in Chicago in 1980, and Streetcar Named Desire. Well, Leslie and a few other people and I went to see the play. And then afterwards, we went to The Mill, which is a wonderful restaurant in Iowa City. And Leslie was talking about, you know, this Stella interests me because now Leslie was a woman who became disabled. She was in a car accident. She lost all her memory. So she really doesn't remember. Um, she had a little girl when the accident happened. And she always said that I, I wish I could remember what she was like as a baby. Her name was Melissa. But what happened was, you know, we're watching, we're talking and, and Leslie said, you know, this Stella interests me because um, my mom said, you know, my husband and I, before we got the divorce, he was very abusive to me. So she was watching a character on fiction, or drama, I should say, getting abused. And so during, while we were together, we worked on scenes from um, Streetcar with Leslie. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. And I guess um, the thing I am so proud of in grad school that I got to do, um, we did kind of, the department did scenes from Henry the Sixth, Part Three, which is William Shakespeare, not one of his better works, just three plays. You have the young Joan of Arc. But I got to do um, uh, a scene from Hen R Henry where you see the young Richard, the Duke of Gloucester, who grows up to be Richard III. And um, I worked with my closest friend, Michael Hacker, who was getting his grad degree, a gentleman who at that time was struggling with his burgeoning sexuality. He was struggling with um, an addiction problem, as people with creative <laughs> people tend to have. And so he had me play the young Richard, and this is a scene where he kills King Henry the Sixth, but then he has, uh, I'm sorry, King Edward, um, but then he has a monologue where he talks about dis being disabled and says, and as the heavens have shaped my body so, let hell make crook my, my mind to answer it. I am no brother, I am like no brother, and this word love which graybeards call divine, be it resident in other men, and not in me, I am but myself alone. Wow. And so many people were impressed by that show, by that my performance. And I know a professor of mine, Judy Millis, really great woman, came up to me at the library and said, you know, I really liked your work. And I have a friend, Jan Williams, who was in Iowa City. She and her husband, Rock, ran a bookstore. And she said, now I know she meant that because I was her TA for drama and Western culture. And she does not give a compliment to be nice. You've got to earn it. So. Well, are there any other plays or selections well, that you did that um, you're I, also proud plays, of? What I did was I did a 10 paper project on how playwrights have dealt with gimps through the years. Okay. Obviously I did dealt with Richard III and I think we can get this picture up here. Uh, actor named Anthony Sher, 
who is with the Royal Shakespeare Company. He did Richard, got really good reviews. In fact, wrote a book called You're the King about his portrayal of Richard. And it's a wonderful book on acting. And he is an interesting character. Um, he grew up in South Africa as a Jew, as a gay man. So he brought a lot of that into his portrayal of Richard III. And um, I got, in fact, I wrote him a, a letter. Can you see the picture again? Yeah, please do. We'll hold it up. Really here. powerful actor. So he wasn't really disabled. Disabled, no. no. Even though he talked about in the book about he had, he had a broken ankle, so he kind of understood the pain. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I wrote ten papers. Um, Miracle Worker. Um, I dealt with Monday After the Miracle, which is um, a sequel kind of to The Miracle okay. Worker with that um, Karen Allen performed in. I dealt with Children of a Lesser God, the play, of course, people remember the movie version with Marley Matlin and Bill Hurd. And how playwrights, I, I dealt with the clinical aspect, mm -hmm. I dealt with the, um, you know, the medical aspect, I dealt with the mice and men, I dealt with the 5th of July, which I hope to get revived, which is a story, the kind of Lanford Wilson, who I think is the most um, un unappreciated playwright in our country, which is the story of a Vietnam vet who is an amputee, who in a small town in Missouri, who really you know finds a purpose in life, and I think that's one of his best shows. And, and what, what uh, book is that again? The play, The Fifth of play. July, Lanford Wilson. July. In fact, okay. people can see it on a DVD with um, uh, Richard Thomas Jr., Jeff Daniels, okay. and Cynthia Nixon before so the she. The Fifth of July. The Fifth of I've July. Because I've heard of Born on the that's, Fourth okay, of July. That's Tom, Tom Cruise. Because yeah. that was also about a yeah, disabled. Ron Kovic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then um, I. So what happened with the Children of a Lesser God was I sent it to the original director of the play who. Mr. Gordon Davidson, who mm -hmm. is the artistic director of the Mark Taper Forum, one of the best regional theaters in this country. And he wrote me back, in fact, um, a really nice letter, which I've got a copy of, and it was very encouraging. And um, it's interesting, he sent me a video of a thing called, of a piece called Tell Them I'm a Mermaid, which is six disabled women talking about their lives, their, how, you know, their frustrations, their joys. And I showed it to my company, The Mainliners. And, all these women were, oh, this has to be the best video ever produced. And a guy named Jeff Brown, who had cerebral palsy, and said, oh, God, it's men, too. So, wow. And then um, another play that I dealt with is The Elephant Man, okay. which have, um, premiered in the late 70s, and um, um, is the story of John Merrick. And it really, you know, I, I, some, I know some gimps don't like that play, but I think there's so many beautiful moments. And I think maybe one of the most beautiful play lines in a play, which is, he says to Mrs. Kendall, who is this actress who comes to see him, and people may remember the movie version with mm -hmm. John Hurt and Anne Bancroft, that sometimes I think my head is so big because it's so full of dreams. Do you know what happens when dreams can't get out, they die? And I, 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 I have, that's, that's my beautiful. line, my life, isn't that? And um, now what's interesting, like, um, Elephant Man, a few years later when I was living in the city, um, Carol Shelley, who was in the original production, um, Many people may know, if you watch The Odd Couple, she's one of the Pigeon sisters, Gwendolyn. Yeah. And she was the original Gwendolyn Pigeon in The Odd Couple on Broadway. And so I, I dropped the play off for her autograph, and I got a really beautiful letter back from her. So that means the world, yeah. And what, what's really interesting about this production for trivia, which I seem to be good at, not only was she in it, you know, but I'm looking at my collected playbills a few years later. That is the first time the young Nathan Lane came to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Who knew who Nathan Lane was then? I don't know who Nathan oh, Lane is okay. now, so no, who's Nathan um, Lane? He was um, one of the hedgehogs in Lion King and the Birdcage. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you know, and of course, he, my, my favorite, one of my two favorite musicals that I've seen in the city, The Producers. So okay. It's so weird, you know, how, you know, people just, you don't, you, you know, you look through your playbills and realize the impact. So. I mean, what's interesting here when you talk about all these plays right. is, other than the miracle worker, I guess right. I never really thought of, right. and I guess the elephant man, of course, too, but right. like of Mice and Men and, um, oh, what was the other one? The that, Fifth of July. The fit, No, the Fifth of July, I know. There was another one that you mentioned, too, but I had no idea, like I've heard of the, the plays, right. but I just really never thought about the theme of disabilities woven right. through them. But and you I, actually bring those to life and Right. And, and I mean, the thing is, you know, obviously the plays I dealt with were not written by people with disabilities. But to me, you know, Lynn, if, you know, I, I know, you know, I'm always getting asked, what does that have to deal with disability? Mm -hmm. But if you don't deal with the universal in art, then to me, I, you know, 
you know, you can say what you want, but you have to deal with the universal thing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know, you know, we're coming up on the 30th anniversary of the movie version of The Color Purple, where Whoopi Goldberg played a, dis a very abused woman. And it's interesting, um, I've always felt, you know, with Danny Glover, who played Mr. in the movie, that I would think he would say, well, you know, uh, I've had a lot of white people come up to me and say, you played my dad in that movie. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I guess, you know, in terms of letters that I've written, I guess the person that I, the letter that I am so proud that I got is from the great actress, Julie Harris, wh uh, who really was the first lady of the American theater for so long. And uh, for people who don't know, um, she was in East of Eden. She's the first woman to kiss James Dean on screen. <laughs> She's a member of the wedding. She was in, on Broadway that made her a star. Carson McCullers' fascinating look at a teenager in Georgia. And I, I really think, you know, what happened was that she came to do our friend Claudia Allen's play at the old Victory Gardens. Claudia Allen's what the was playwright, the play? yeah, one of the, and okay. she wrote this play, okay. Winter, about these two old people reuniting after mm -hmm. years. And Mike Nussbaum was in it, the famous Mike okay. Nussbaum. So they they just had such a wonderful chemistry. And I said, Hey, Claudia, you know, do you mind if I drop something off at the at the theater? And she said, oh, I know she'd love it. So I got back a really nice letter from her. Oh. And then, um, uh, what you know, did the letter say? Do you remember? Just the letter, letter just said, "Dear Rob, thank you for so much for your article and or your, for your letter, and I wish you the best." And of course, I dropped off a picture of James Dean, and she said, w "My especially your photo of James Dean, oh. which hangs on my wall." Really? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So it's those kind of letters, Lynn, that I think encourage me to do that. My life, even though. I haven't had a job that society dictates. Mm -hmm. I still feel I've done great things. And, you have. And, you, you know. It's like you've been an ambassador through your letters. Right. Bringing awareness and attention yeah. and then receiving these beautiful responses yeah. back. And it's really neat about Julie. Um, she, had, she came here to do a second play of Claudius in 2001. She had a stroke mm. and she really couldn't act again, but we still, we still corresponded after mm -hmm. that. And in fact, um, she wrote me a nice letter when my sister died. I mean, to hear from that woman, you know, of course, and I suppose the, the, her most famous role is Emily Dickinson. She brought Emily okay. Dickinson to life. Okay. And then um, I know um, in 2008, I wrote her a letter and I said, uh, right before the inauguration of Barack Obama, and I said, oh, if only Ethel Waters could be alive to sing His Eyes on the Sparrow. Yeah. And I, I really recommend Member of the Wedding. And Ethel Waters plays Bernice Sadie Walters, who is kind of like the caregiver for the two children. And her, her, she sings Isaiah's on the Sparrow in that, in that movie. Wow. It's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So this was a friendship that went over s many years. Yeah, I think we, well, let's see, 1999 till about um, maybe 2005, okay. 2000, yeah. So, okay. yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. A long time. Uh, so anything else that you'd like to, so I you hope, have so you know, many great experiences. Drawing on all this I've talked about before, I really would like to start doing theater workshops mm -hmm. again. I did one at Thresholds, um, and it was so neat. We did, I had them do the song Sunday from Sunday in the Park with George, another Stephen Sondheim musical about the creation of La Grand Jet. And I had people, we, the song Sunday, which is really where, how the characters become La Grand Jet. And I had them do that. and then. Okay. One woman I had her do, um, people may remember years ago, the kindergarten essay by Robert Fulgram. Most of what I needed to learn, I learned in kindergarten. Oh, yes, and yes, she yes. read it, and she has this wonderful line about, wouldn't it be better, wouldn't it be great if the governments of all nations could really solve their problems? And that <laughs> got a big applause. So, yeah. so what would it look like if you started to do more workshops? I think it would just, I'd, I'd like to do, you know, show my passion for theater, mm -hmm. use all my action figures, which I have an enormous amount of. And, you know, creativity is something, it can be so limited, but it can be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I want. You know, do some voice, do some movement. Well, obviously, if the person can't move, you know, I would say, well, you use whatever you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful idea. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, how do you think you'll? Do you I have any ideas for start getting this talking started? to people, and I still hope I can use this show as a yeah. format. Yeah, well, definitely are right, right now, yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I that's hope. great. I mean, it, studies have shown that it, theater is great for people with disabilities. Right. It, I think it just makes them more creative, more expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, thank Rob. You, Linda, really Linda. enjoyed hearing about your letters and 
just all the warm, positive responses. And uh, good luck with, thank you. with the workshops in the future. Thank you, Lynn. And for Adaptive Chicago Productions, thank you for joining us. Have a great one.